podcast. <laughs> you listen to Kendrick and Matt on the Slip and Dip podcast. Oh, beautiful, man. Woo! Episode 116, Slip and Dip podcast. Back in your life after a couple week hiatus, we didn't go nowhere. We just went to the scene of the major events, got some personal R and R time. Kendrick Johnson, Matthew Wells, fresh off of UFC 243, with a kind of Sonya, fresh off of Triple G and Sergey Devinchenko, and fresh off the classic fight that was Sean Porter and Earl Spence in a classic. And today is in my top two of fights I've seen live. Mm. Wow, that's like that's high praise. Co- high coast praise. to coast, started in LA two weeks ago. Went to Vegas for some R and R. Finished up in, in MSG last night. Had a great two weeks. Saw two very great fight of the year candidate fights. I was not surprised by Porter Spence. I don't get the boxing community. Man, this is a great fight. You know, it was going to be this good. These dudes they're going to fight since they were in the amateurs. So they left it all on the line and they both took chances. And we got a classic. Now last night. I did not see that coming, and we saw the old-ass Triple G. I've interviewed Triple G multiple times, but I have never seen him fight live until last night. He looked like a 37-year-old guy that has been in some recent wars, and his better days are behind him. Yeah. He, he, I had him losing, and the, 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 the running joke is this Triple G second home the garden. Well, he got booed in his second home last night because they booed his ass in the garden. Yeah, hundred percent, man. I, I think he also took the L. Well, I don't know. It was close. It was. Just I didn't score. I got so into the fight because close. I didn't yeah, think I didn't, it was gonna I be. A, score I, I thought he was gonna once he started after the second round. I like okay, he's gonna find a way to get him out of there. And when he yeah. couldn't, and he kept coming, I got into the fight. So I didn't even score it. So I can't even tell you what I had. I had Porter Spence exactly how the judges had it. One fifteen, one twelve. Yeah. Well, before we get too far into what happened, let's talk about what we got on the show this week. We have three fantastic guests for you guys out there. Jared Killer Gorilla Cannoneer, fresh off his big win over Jack Hermanson all the way uh, over in Europe and uh, Denmark, right? That's where it took place, right? Uh, we also have Jarrell Big Baby Miller on the show, one of the best heavyweights in the world uh, to talk about everything going on with him recently. And Marcos Villegas of Fight Hub is here to talk about everything that he's been going on, Fight Hub, the whole media game and all that kind of things like that. But yeah, so let's get back into it. Let's get back into it, man. Triple G, Devrinchenko, it was a hell of a fight, man. Like you said, one of the best fights of the year. Um, Fresh off the heels of Porter Spitz. And like like I said, this was not supposed to be remotely competitive, less known. A fight of the year candidate, but props to Sergey Devinchenko. Once he, it's like he's crazy. Yeah. Once he got knocked down the second round and got cut in the third round, he decided to fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he got that early cut. It, it reminded me of the Fury fight. He got the early cut in a similar spot too, right over there, over that eye, on the right on the right below the eyebrow, caused by a punch. Yeah, but he did a, he did a lot better job of protecting it than uh, Tyson Fury did. But of course, he also didn't have Triple G pawing at it and scratching at it <laughs> like uh, old boy was too. But <laughs> Yeah, it was it was a good fight, man. It was a good fight. Um, you know, I'm not surprised Triple G got the win, no matter what. I was expecting shenanigans on the scorecards either way, <laughs> as I, everybody else. I, I, I can tell you, it's my first boxing card. I've been to two UFC cards. Shit pop off at the Garden. That is not a myth. I thought it was a myth. I've been there three times and seen three. Like, did I just see that happen? Like, yeah. stuff pops off at the Garden. And just that that atmosphere is like what they say at the Mecca and the atmosphere is electric. It's all that. I've been there for UFC twice now, and now I got my boxing experience. That yeah, fight night at MSG is on a different level. You talking to somebody who's been in MSG, been at MGM and Staples, and it's just like a it's its own entity. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Got see one. So you so you mentioned UFC. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about what went down all the way in the land down under UFC 243. Whitaker Adesanya got me watching the fight. I didn't watch it live because um, I was at uh, Coco. I was live at Triple G you now, but it was kind of weird watching the pay per view after it happened, knowing what happened, but then not knowing what happened. And what I saw was Robert Whitaker really didn't make enough adjustments, and he paid the price. He should have made the adjustments when he got his ass caught at the end of the first round, but he didn't. And got caught a little bit with no with a lot more time left in the second round, and he didn't let him tell about it. Yeah, he um, as 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 I mentioned later, as you'll see in the interview um, when we talk with Jared, um, I, I thought that you know, Adesanya was giving him a false sense of security with the punches that he was landing, the, the success that he was having, because 
when Whitaker was out there giving it his all, giving everything into every punch he was putting in, like swinging he's through the fence. A lot. Yeah, he's missing, and Adesanya was just downloading all that info. He was just downloading all that info, <laughs> figuring out where these holes are coming, and he, and you saw in the last minute or so, he started opening up with the kicks more. He started staying in the pocket more, you know, laying in counters, and then when we seen the last second, boom, gets dropped clean, and he had an opportunity to land a follow-up punch like right at the buzzer, but he didn't. Because that's how in tune he is. He's so aware of everything going on. Where we see other fighters that won't necessarily be aware of that moment. They say they get, you know, locked or they get lost in the moment where like they forget, you know, what's going on. They can't control themselves, so to speak. That just shows you like how aware of everything that's going on Adesanya is. And uh for him to do that and pull that punch at the last second. But as we saw, we fast forward to the end of this or the second round. I mean it was just more the same. I mean, yeah, Whitaker was having some success with the punches, but again, I felt it was more so Adesanya rolling with the punches and figuring out how he could counter off of all of these lunging combinations that Whitaker was throwing at him. And of course, we see him get the get the finish, man. And not surprised. I'm I'm not one of those people that had Whitaker winning the fight. I had Adesanya winning Me it. Too. I mean, we've seen recently, like when these guys have these waves, man, like. Adesanya's been on a wave, man. February of last year, this guy made his UFC debut. He's been on a hell of a run. Hell of a run. And now he just unified the titles. Just to, like, man, it's crazy. He, he's something special, man. He's on a different level. Yeah. Not only inside the ring, he gets it. He gets the whole game. He gets the yeah. whole game. I'm talking about the entertainment side, the fighting side. He understands it. Got the, got the box of intros. Got his homeboys involved. They got people in MMA following all over themselves because they hadn't seen no culture like that before. <laughs> yeah, man. The the, uh, the walkout was amazing. And, it's, again, it's just one of those things we don't see in MMA all that often. We don't nope. see guys get to show their personality like this when it comes to their entrances because usually everything is so vanilla with the UFC. We see it in other promotions all the time. Guys get to do more. We see it in Bellator. Bellator gets to have fun with their entrances. You know, all these other promotions get to have fun with their entrances. Like the KSWs of the world. Like, they do the <laughs> craziest shit in the world. I, I want to, um, the fun, funny thing is, by uh, going to these fights the last couple weeks, I've been around the promoters, the Eddie Hearns and stuff of the world, and they keep talking about the Logan Paul and that KS1 oh fight. They keep saying that, like, that's going to do, like, all kinds of numbers. I just want to see what kind of intros those cats going to have. Yeah, I mean, I don't care because I don't care about a damn thing about that fight. So <laughs> I don't care what the hell they do. Like, that should not be promoted along the same realm of the same platform as a Triple G. You know, it's the same Canelo. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like, what they really should have done, they really should promote that fight on YouTube. Like, they both have millions of followers on YouTube. Why are they not doing that fight on their own YouTube simultaneously? <laughs> it makes no sense to me. But I don't know. I don't. I don't get it. But anyways, <laughs> back to back to the main shit. Like this interest was so dope. Adesanya, like, listen. If, if a guy comes to the ring doing all this, he's on a different level mentally. He knows, like, look, I can do all of this and still be focused on what I need to do once I step inside this cage. Other guys get into the into their head too much. I think. Um, also, where it's like, okay, I got to focus every single second on the fight, every single second on what I have to do to win. Even um Sean Sp uh, Sean Porter he had little Mary Mary mixed in and then he oh, had Big the, e? uh, he had uh, Big E <laughs> don't you dare be sour clap for your two time world champion yeah Sean Showtime Porter yeah, and man. feel the power shout out to Andreas Hale for hooking that up man everybody was saying that was Fox. Nah, that Fox had nothing to do with it. Yeah, well, we're trying, baby, I'm trying to get him on. He's going to give us the inside. But we're going to go back to Port Spence. We haven't talked about that in a while. I had the, the, the fight score for um, Spence almost exactly how I thought it was going to go. 116, 112. The only surprise for me is that Earl caught him so late in the 11th round. And it was a flash knockdown, but it was a knockdown by any stretch. But... The adjustments made by both teams was definitely tip your hat off, especially when Porter's not known for making adjustments. It's like they, they emptied the clip on, on Earl. They gave him all he wanted. He, I think now to be in the ring with Sean for 36 minutes, Earl meant that he had his hands full all night. But then the day, his hands might be full, but so is his shoulders because he got two belts now. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, new unified champion. I had it 114, 113. I had to pull it up and see what I had it as. I had a 114, 113. I had a close fight. I had a super close. And yeah, I agree, like with Spence tagging him like that in the um 
in the eleventh round. Right. And it was a flat, quick flash knockdown. But again, like he like literally his hand grazed. The oh yeah, the butt it grazed the canvas in fast motion. But when you show that replay, that slow mo, he was all the way rocked. So <laughs> yeah, shout out to that. And uh, man, I gotta get you out to L.A. too, man. The L.A. the L.A. fight scene was ridiculous. Like, I saw him, it's like one of those things. Like each as each day came, the fight built. Mm-hmm. It's like you felt it. Where last week uh, in New York, that that was not that vibe. But it's like once you walked to the arena yesterday and it closer got to the main event on the actual day, it built and you felt it. So that's what makes the Garden special. But that uh, like Spence Porter, you I don't know anybody that that says like, I was surprised they did. They went around the action because that just felt like a special fight. And yeah. People gonna talk about that 15, 20 years, like they talk about uh, Oscar De La Hoya and Tito Trinidad. Yeah, yeah, it's a good fight, man. It's a good fight. Good, good two weeks of combat sports, and uh, yeah, man, fans has to wait to cap, cap it off at Adesanya. Sec two African champions in the UFC now joining Kamaru Usman. And uh, yeah, man, I can't wait to USC Africa coming hopefully in two years' time. Everybody's big on that stuff. It's huge, man. That's huge. That's huge. Every huge, but what are they going to build a stadium and all that stuff? They don't have to build a stadium, man. Africa is not some barren wasteland. Africa has money, they have stadiums. <laughs> like, really? Are you serious right now? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Sorry, we're going to wrap it up on that. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, follow us on YouTube, on Instagram. Not Instagram. Well, yeah, follow us on Instagram, too. But on iTunes, hit that uh, follow button and leave us a five-star review. We would appreciate it. We're on, uh, yeah, anywhere you can find the podcast if you're watching it on YouTube. So if you want audio only, go there. And uh, vice versa, if you're listening to it, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, We'll be back next week with more guests for you guys. Um, Until next week, peace. Please welcome back to the Slip and Dip Podcast. Friend of the show, and if you didn't know, now you know, UFC middleweight contender, Mr. (laughs) Jared Killer Gorilla Cannoneer, fresh off his TKO victory of Jack Hermanson at UFC Denmark. Congrats on the win, brother. We didn't holler at you since you got that dub. Yeah, man. uh, It was a good good trip. This is a, good, a really good business trip, so uh, I'm glad to be back. You know, everything's back to normal now, so uh, business as usual. <laughs> you you got two performances in the night since moving to middleweight. So you, do you think you, you it's official, you found the home, and you, you're you geared to make that title shot, that title run? Yep, you know, I, again, like I said, business as usual, man. I'm just here to, uh, to win fights, <coughs> and... Uh, I'm glad I'm getting these bonuses, you know, based off of my effort. Uh, so, yeah, I would definitely uh, have to say I'm making myself comfortable here in the middleweight division. Cool. Well, what do you think about that state of it after last night? How you how you figuring that mix? Because your name never comes up, good or bad. People don't call it out. People don't say you should be fighting for the belt. It's like they don't they, – they still not – I, I, I just – for someone who watches the sports, like – they don't got the message that you're a problem at 185. It's like, when did you get the memo? Well, actually, I was uh, looking at uh, the post-fight interviews yesterday. And Izzy, they asked uh, Izzy, uh, since he's not impressed with uh, uh, Costa, mm-hmm. you know, who is he impressed with? And uh, he, you know, brought, brought up my name, you know, mentioned me, you know, all due respect. Uh, was very respectful, very cool. And... Uh, I think he recognized uh, uh, some of the skills there. So uh, I think he's got a really good eye of what's going on, uh, especially as far as I'm concerned. I think he called it pretty well. He said, you know, uh, probably one or two fights, and I'll be uh, facing him for the title. Um, I'm thinking bigger than that, you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking maybe the (laughs) next fight I can already have a title fight, but uh, I'm being a little bit more optimistic in that regard. But, uh, yeah, Izzy did mention me. I think he's the first to ever – Mention me as a possible, uh, 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 what's the word, you know, uh, potential fight mm-hmm. down the line. So uh, if he's, th- he, with him being a champion and him thinking that, hey, I could be fighting uh, Jared uh, Jared real soon, that, uh, let, let's, to me that says a lot. So uh, that's big praise coming from a champion of his uh, caliber. So, um, but yeah, you know, I'll take it. Were you watching that? Were you watching it live? Because I was watching it live when he brought it up. I was like, "Oh, okay, all right, yeah, there you go, yeah, Mr. Mr. Killer Gorilla." So hell yeah, yeah, that was yeah, 
As soon as I heard my name, both my ears popped up. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, huh, what? I, I, I was I like, all right. To the, to the pro squad first. I was in um, New York at the Triple G fight last night. So okay. I, I watched, I watched uh, Izzy's destruction after the fight. I was like, yeah. I was at 4 a.m. Eastern time watching it. So I knew what I knew what talk, talked about. <laughs> to me, there's two things. Um, Whitaker don't look the same. And two, he fought a stupid fight, technically. Um... I wouldn't say that exactly. I wouldn't say uh, he didn't look good. I thought he looked good. I, I thought he was getting in pretty good on, on on Israel, closing the distance, putting himself in a position to land some good shots. Um, uh, I think one of the mistakes that he did make was in getting in close like he was, he wasn't protecting yeah. himself. Uh, he wasn't protecting himself the right way. Yeah, the counters killing was, him. Yeah, which is why he was eating those counters coming in. So, uh, you know, you got to be defensively and off. You know, you have to be defensively sound, or you have to be defensive at the same time as you're being offensive. So, um, but we all, you know, all of us make those mistakes. Uh, get in and start throwing boat bombs, and forget to forget to bring our hands back home, protect our faces and stuff. Um, but I thought I don't think he looked too bad. Uh, he definitely could have looked a little bit more sharper. You know, he had been out of the. Uh, out of the octagon for for a number of months, so he definitely wasn't too sharp. But you know, um, to say he looked bad is is uh, uh, to say he didn't look at well. Anyway, <laughs> on top of that, on top of that, he is fighting. He is fighting one of the best strikers in, yes, the, in, 100%. in the in the game right now. So uh, you know, I think if you a good enough striker, will make anybody look bad. Hundred percent. Right, right. Yeah, I, I don't think he looked bad at all. I think what happened was I think he kind of got lulled into a little false sense of security because Izzy was kind of—I won't say he was letting him get hit, but he was rolling with everything he was getting hit with. And the first round, I, the way I saw it was, yeah, Robert was winning the winning the round, but I also had this feeling of Izzy's just downloading all his information. And then we well, we saw the very last second of the first round. He gets put out. If there was two more seconds left in the round, the fight's over. Yeah. And like he said in that post fight too, he should have thrown that punch. Because yeah. The ref, you know, he he could have put him out cold right there. You know. And then of course, as we see in the second round, he's still like props to Robert for coming back and still trying to go out there and put those hands on him. Yeah. But I the way I was watching the fight, I don't know if he felt the same way. Please tell me if you felt, felt differently. But I felt that Izzy was just downloading information, downloading information. While Robert thought he was, you know, having more pushing, success than he really yeah, was. pushing the action, making uh, you know, getting closer to the finish he was trying to get. Yeah. I think you have, uh, yeah, I feel exact. I feel uh, the the same way as you do in that regard. Uh, he was definitely downloading information. You see, he wasn't throwing out every technique that we know he can. He's used or he can use in the octagon. Um, I think I think you're absolutely right. Uh, Whitaker was definitely trying to. Uh, push the point, you know what I'm saying? Really trying to, uh, I'm going to fight you. I'm going to win this fight. It's going to be a fight. It's going to be a cracker, as he as he said. <laughs> and uh, he, I think he tried to make that happen. I think I, I kind of made the same mistake when I fought uh, when I fought Dominic Reyes. You know, he was a long, taller, longer guy, and I knew I had to get in his grill and take the fight to him. He ain't going to be bigger than me. You ain't finna bully me around. And you know what I'm saying? You ain't finna be better than me. And um, I paid for it too, and and, it, and almost the exact similar fashion. You know, he got hit with a hook, I got hit with an uppercut. Mm-hmm. So um, it happens. You know, it's happened to a lot of us, and uh, it's is a, is a, a tough lesson. I, it was a tough lesson for me to learn. You know, all losses are definitely tough to learn, but I definitely learned from it. And knowing Whitaker, knowing the type of uh, fighter he is, he's definitely going to learn from it. Hopefully he comes back better than he was. Um, hopefully not before uh, he sees me in the octagon. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I hope he keeps on uh, uh, throwing his shots with his hands down because my counter game is on point too. <laughs> the, but this is why I said it was a dumb fight. With the end of the first round, you saw what happened. So I'm going to keep doing the same thing. That's why I didn't get it. Yeah, and I can understand not him not wanting to give out a sign at a time. In the space, you know, to throw all that fancy shit that he can, you know, get off in the fight. But who knows what the, who knows what he was thinking? Um, 
you know, who knows what he was thinking. Uh, one thing I can say is that in the aftermath of it, I, lo- I really loved the way he's carrying himself. You know, he's taking his, taking his loss like a man. Um, he's not letting it hang over his head like a dark cloud. Uh, he's gonna. He's ar- I think he's already grown from it, um, and he's gonna grow even more. So I can. Uh, I can. Uh, I tip my hat to that aspect of him, uh, and uh, it, I appreciate the fact that they those guys went out there and put on a fight for us. You know, it gave me some information to download before I get in the octagon <laughs> with one of those guys. <laughs> Jason, they, Jason, they were the only one downloading the information last night. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> What, what do you say to those people out there? It's like, yeah, Killer Gorilla's a good fighter. It's cool. It's a good story. His powers came now from heavyweight down to middleweight. But that brother too old to be making a run. He's thirty five. Who, who they fooling? Well, shit, man. If they thinking being thirty five is being old and decrepit and unable, I can't. I hate to see them when they turn thirty five. You know, but I feel I feel vibrant. I feel even better than I did in my twenties. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm smarter than I was in my twenties. I'm in, I'm in better shape than I was in my twenties. I'm in a better position than I, I was in my twenties. Um, uh, I spent my twenties uh, preparing for this moment right now. So uh, anybody who's thinking age is a factor, uh, are uh, essentially put limitations on themselves. But they ain't finna put them limitations on me. Age is not a factor in 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 my regard. Not yet, at least. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, I'm still young in my career. I haven't taken too much damage, no wear or tear. You haven't seen me in any wars or anything like that. Um, so, you know, I just had three fights, and they've all ended in less than what? In just about 15 minutes. Three fights in 15 minutes. So um, I'm trying to keep that trend going, man. Um, uh, a fight, five minutes per fight. That's all I got for you. <laughs> and and, and uh, before I let my man Matt jump in, how, how, what, what would be your game plan to beat Edisano? And do you think you could beat him in a war? Because people think he's unbeatable in wars because the way he beat Kelvin. And I think that's the way to beat him. Because you can't stand there and let him look pretty and, and let him turn you into a sparring partner. You got to take chances. It's a fight. It's definitely not a sparring match. And, uh, in a fight, you got to know that if you give him the time and the space to do all that shit, it ain't going to be, it, it may not look good for you. It's going to be a Exactly. So, I, that, again, that's why I say uh, Whitaker's approach to the fight was, uh, wasn't was too bad. It was too similar to uh, Gastelum's uh, approach. athletic. Yeah. Who, who uh, Gaslam isn't or no, 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 Robert is Gaslam's more athletic than what he to me. He's that guy, he'll look athletic until he pops you with that left hand, like he did yeah. in the fourth round. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, um, <coughs> excuse me, because nobody's ever been able to do that to him. Say again, nobody's ever been able to do that to Izzy or catch him, and he did it multiple times yeah. in that fight. Yeah, he definitely showed that he's able to get hit, so um. And, you know, I, I see uh, – I don't want to say holes in his game, you know what I'm saying, but I do see opportunities to exploit some of the uh, some of the tactics and some of the uh, skills that he employs. People call him holes, but I think there's too much of a negative uh, connotation associated when you say holes in his game. It, some people take it as, oh, you're saying I'm not good enough, you're saying my skill isn't efficient. And so I'm gonna not I'm not gonna use that term. I will say that I do see opportunities to capitalize off of and and, and uh, win the fight against uh, against all of them, not just out of science, but Whitaker. You know what I'm saying? Romero, anybody ahead of me, everybody behind me. You know there are like I said, anybody can get it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's capable of getting knocked the fuck out, getting choked the fuck out. They capable. The bodies are able to be broken. So um, there we go. Sorry about that. So, um, and I'm smart enough to be able to pick up on those things and, and find out and figure out how to make those things happen. So, um, if we ever fought, you know what I'm saying? When or if or when we ever fight, it's going to be, uh, it's going to, I'm, I'm going to employ tactics. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to employ tactics the same way that he employs. And we're going to see how, it, we're going to see how it goes. I, one thing I do know is that it's going to be fucking fun for me to do it. You know what I'm saying? To figure it out, to, uh, maybe face some adversity or maybe not face some adversity. Um, but I know that I'm capable of coming out on top. Yeah, man. I can't, I can't wait to see that. 
Now, in in the meantime, like with the, talk about your recent your recent outings, man. Like you've been like the the crowd silencer, man. You've been going into enemy territory, just shutting the whole place down. Get quiet, just shutting them down. <laughs> Brazil, like you got the booze in Brazil, Denmark. They was like, uh, I mean, I, you, you, hear, you can you hear know. the gas when you put the hands on the boy. You can see all the. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, are you enjoying being this dude that just goes in and be like, "Hey, I'm shutting this place down." Uh, it is kind of fun going into somebody <laughs> else's, uh, you know, territory, and uh, you know, shit. It's some alpha male type shit involved in that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, if I if I if I wasn't married, man, I'd be up there. And, you know how the you know how the you know how the lion does. They go into the pride, kill off all the strong males, and uh, I'm not gonna get morbid and say what they do to the cubs, but you you guys get the rest. Right. <laughs> but um. But yeah, um, for me, it's just again, they're just uh, they're just fights to me. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't, it doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter where, it doesn't matter how anybody feels about it. The only thing matters is how I feel about you right now. And I'm about to whoop your ass. I'm trying to do it as easy as possible. I ain't trying to take no damage. And uh, I'm trying to cast some paychecks. So uh, step up or step out of the way. Now, how would you feel about, you know, if you if it is like a, a couple of fights from now, like the, like he was saying, like, like he was saying one or two fights, like you were saying one fight. You know, how would you feel to go into like a Marvel Stadium where it is this massive arena where it just seems like it's like nothing but open air? Like well, you know, the, like the large flat space, and of course, they would be all on. It would be another opportunity for you to go shut down another arena. <laughs> you know, imagine, but, um, imagine silencing sixty thousand people. That would be insane, right? Right. Yeah. So, uh, it's it's possible. You know, uh, the UFC loves Adesanya right now, and I'm sure they'd be more than happy to make a fight down there again. Um, I think if they were going to put me in a fight with him. In uh, in uh, Marvel Stadium, or for a venue of that uh, of that magnitude, I would it would definitely have to be after one or two more fights after I you know beat the brakes off of whoever stands in front of me in very dominant fashion, and uh, maybe have a, another uh, A plus uh, post fight interview or two after that as well. Um, so, uh, but yet again, you know, to me, for me, it doesn't matter where. Um, just let me know who, so I can get ready for him. For sure. What did, what did you? Well, what did you? What did you think about the uh, the entrance that he had? I thought it was cool, man. Uh, the classic Izzy, you know what I'm saying? That's his style. That's his thing. He does the dancing thing, and uh, it's a. Uh, and then you know that's cool. That's that's his thing. Um, I for one personally wouldn't you know put myself through all the trouble of uh, coordinating and choreographing and and, <laughs> and doing all that stuff, you know. Um, whether it be for the fans, you know, uh, I don't know if he did it for the fans. I'm sure he did that for himself. He's going to garner his own energy from that and, uh, cultivate the result that he did. So, <clears throat> um, I'm not going to knock him from doing that. Again, that's not my cup of tea. You won't see me do, if anything, you'll see me jamming out to the music that I'm playing. Nah, that big you know bogey. That's the yep, switch of house. Getting into it. You know what I'm saying? Some big mo. <laughs> so, big mo is what well, I walked well, out to last time. Yeah, so when, yeah. when, when, when you got that SUC stuff going on, what, 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 what's going to your turn? Are you legitimately getting crunk or they're just part of the fight? Well, uh, when I grew up listening to SS, you, you know, listening to the Screwed Up Click and all that stuff, hmm. some of the songs didn't really uh, garner any... Uh, not like a uh, a warlike or aggressive type of mentality. It was more of a a dominant male. Uh, I'm an alpha dude. I got my shit together. I'm running my own shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm making my money. You know what I'm saying? I'm run. I got my empire going. I'm doing my thing and I'm doing it big. Step out of the way, or you finna get knocked down. Mm -hmm. You know, not a lot of uh, violence or 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 anything like that. You know, so it's all about. Uh, I guess you can call it slice of life music. You know what I'm saying? For 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 a good old Southern player. So uh, <clears throat> so it makes me feel like I'm untouchable. Some you know I can garner those type of uh, that type of energy from. It makes me feel like shit. You know I'm the fucking boss. You know what I'm saying? I'm the shit. I'm about to go in here and show y'all how I do. How we shine down in H Town or over in, in uh, you know down in D Town. You know what I'm saying? This is how we shine. This is how we do things in Texas. Down here in Texas, Louisiana, we talk about that man. Yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
<laughs> get them, get them. You know, everybody think I'm from Alaska and keep calling me Alaskan and stuff. Like, look, I got ties up there. You know what I'm saying? That's why I built myself my MMA career. But you know what I'm saying? The the man, the man is from Texas. He's a Texan. You know what I'm saying? The fighter. You know what I'm saying? I'm, you can call me Alaskan fighter all you want, but uh, you know I'm from I'm, I'm from Dallas. I'm from D Town, Oak Cliff, Dallas, Texas, and. Uh, <clears throat> You know, that's that's what's in my heart, you know what I'm saying? So I'm a rep to the day that I die. That's the music that I grew up with. That's the energy that's that's flowing through me, through my veins. And uh, I ain't ashamed to show that shit, especially all the way over in Denmark. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that leads me to my, my next questions. Uh, one is, do you, like, are you ready for somebody? Because the new thing is... Uh, People, quote unquote, testing your gangster. Do you, you think you want to bring out that Dallas side? Like you see how Izzy and and John Jones, they're getting pretty close to testing each other's gangster. I know that involved mm-hmm. you, but if you want to try to sh- shift that energy towards you for any reason, are, are you ready to bring out that Dallas side? Let them know what you're about. Let them say well, no here's a, well, here's the thing. All right, um, I'm just saying I just ain't no hood ass nigga either. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Most. Most of the niggas uh, uh, react off react off of emotions, but uh, I'm I'm smarter than that. You know what I'm saying? You step on somebody's shoes, not just in Dallas, but you know in most ghetto. You step on somebody's shoes, you know you gonna have to have to fight or or, or get shot or some stupid shit like that. But uh, so I ain't gonna get hood or ghetto. I ain't no hoodie like that or anything like that. But uh, let's put it like this: I'm not gonna meet. Stupid ass energy with stupid ass energy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if that stupid ass energy come my way, I'm gonna deal with it accordingly, like a grown ass, 35 year old man. You know, we ain't finna sit here and argue. I ain't finna call you no bitch or no hoe on the internet. I do that shit to your face. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, and, and another thing, you know what I'm saying? I feel that if you feed that energy, you know, if you feed that type of uh, energy and I, and I think that type of energy requires attention to survive you know what I'm saying I think if you feed it it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger so what I like to do is when I see those slugs come out of the grass and they start you know yapping off I just throw salt over there they'll go away <laughs> and um, also, also like the, the interest so I know that's not your personality you think that people because they're not used to a the culture they give it too much credence like for instance if he does that in a boxing event, he's just another brother going to the ring where everybody has a rapper rapping to the ring. He's just another dude. But since it's MMA, it's, it's groundbreaking. It's, it's like, nice. y'all people need to expand your horizon and get out the fucking box. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> like, like for yeah. instance, like you ought to have your boy Yellow Beasy. Like he do Earl, Earl Spence. Have him come to war. Have him come to one UFC fight and your star going, more people going to know about you off of that but regardless of what happened to the thing. I'm not being funny. Yeah. You have you absolutely right about that. Um, I follow Yellow Beasy on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Simply for the fact that you know he a Dallas cat. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I support my own people. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, I'm not gonna say that I agree with the message in all of his music. So uh, I don't know. It would be a hard, a hard, uh, a hard uh, take for me to say. Yeah, walk me out to this song where you're talking about. You know banging a whole bunch of bitches and yeah. selling drugs, you know, <laughs> selling what drugs. What about that's baby? You keep like everybody doing that, champ. Say what? What about that's OB, baby? Like, like he, like he rapped Earl Spitz. That's like his, uh, that's like Earl's, like, it was funny when he, I was in the uh, house when he just fought the border fight. There was people from California, New York, they were highly disappointed. That's OB, baby, they come on. They were highly disappointed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, like I said, I follow him, but I don't really listen to the music. So, uh, I don't even know what kind of uh, energy or what type of frequency he's on as far as his music goes, but uh, you know I see you know I see the type of attention I see the type of crowd it uh, it the ten- the type of attention from the type of people it garners and uh, <clears throat> Wait, not, no, I, I threw his name out there. But somebody in that genre, would you do that to to be different? And also too, I don't know if you saw the Earl Spence fight. You know Southside the realest. Yeah. Like oh, that yeah. came on in between the rounds 
and he yeah. got crunk and finished. He said straight up he needed something to get him inspired. It came on yeah. between the ninth and tenth round, and he won the last three to win that fight and put Sean Porter on the ground and the letter round. And then you got these people not from Texas. What was that song? Why did you get yeah. so excited, Earl? Like that, you get something like that going on, man. I'm gonna be up in up in press row jamming in my suit. <laughs> Hey, that's what they was asking me about. They was asking me about the song I walked out to over in Denmark. And uh but uh you know one song that I do want to walk out to, and it's like a Dallas anthem, you know what I'm saying? Uh it's and it's from my time, you know what I'm saying? Is uh Mr. Pookie? Uh Mr. That's it. That's it. Lay, <laughs> hell yeah, lay. If they want, uh, was it lay down? I'm a crook for life or something like that. Lay down. I'm a crook for life. Yeah. If hell yeah. Me. That hey man, that's. That's that's the hood anthem in Dallas right there, man. man. Anybody from the hood in Dallas know that song, and that's some shit that I grew up with right there. But, I didn't. I again, I got out of the hip hop scene, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know too much about Yellow Beezy or even uh, C Strugs, you know what I'm saying? And uh, there's a couple of cats who, who I went to school with who rapping too, who I follow on Instagram, but you know I'm not into that music no more. Um, it's it's different for me. The music has changed, and uh, I'm just not into it. You know what I'm saying? It's just I just don't resonate. With, resonate with it that much anymore the music that i grew up with you know what i'm saying is imprinted on me that's why you still see me jamming some old suc from the late 90s you know what i'm saying that's why I, when i if, if ever i fight in dallas i'm walking out to that uh mr pookie um <laughs> yeah y'all round him up he, he's still in the hood oh i'm a skill man i'll tell you <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah man i'll have hell i'll have them walk me up because that's the stuff that i grew up with you know what i'm saying i don't you know, I can, you know, I can sort of relate to that. Can, can, can so. me and man help you pick get your walkout? Can we have some, have some slip and dip input whenever you fight for a title? Or or in Dallas, what are the two? Have a what now? If you if you fight in Dallas or you fight for a title, can we, can we put our minds together and get you a cool walkout so people be talking yeah. about that? <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. 100%, man. Yeah, that'd be yeah. dope. Yeah, that's the thing, man. Like, there's not enough people that do something no. interesting. Like, I, it was... Oh, my God. Like, like, like Kendrick was saying, like, it happens it, all the time in boxing, but that's why people trip out in MMA, because it uh, didn't happen in exactly. MMA. Exactly. Like, like, it was cool. Yeah. I hate on the man for what he did. Just, like, he just said, like, okay, cool. Like, I've seen, uh, yeah. the fights I've been to this year, I've seen a belt come from the top of Staples Center in a case, and then yeah. um, J-Rock... Comes out of nowhere. Win, 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 win. Fuck everything. <laughs> and they had the dances and everything in the video. That's what Deontay yeah. fought Wilder. Uh, uh, Deontay fought uh, Fury in um, December. Yeah. And then, of course, um, um, uh, That's On Me, Baby. And then yeah. um, um, when that song Lifestyle had just came out, Adrian Broner uh-huh. was on top of his game. I didn't even know who, um, not when that, it was um, Little Dirk. I didn't even know who Little Dirk was. Yeah, and that's why that was my introduction. Yeah. The introduction to Little Dirk. He rapped out Adrian Broner when he got beat in San Antonio. So okay, like, I thought that was uh, Young Thug who did that song. No, the, the, the um the uh Little Dirk is um this ain't what you want. I call it how I see it now. This ain't what you want. And that's when Adrian Broner was on top of his game. That's, that's <laughs> okay, he, that's before he went to because he, yeah, I know I had music chops out here, did y'all out here in the slipping yeah. dim land? <laughs> Kendra karaoke moment right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, but that's the thing, man. Like, we need to see more of that because that they shows more personality. And I like the contrast because Robert Whitaker, like you were saying, like you don't see yourself doing the whole dancing thing, but vibing with your music. That's what Whitaker did. Like, let's just see the character. Like, if you want to go out there and dance, hey, UFC, let let your main eventers do whatever they want. At least, at least let the yeah. main event do what they want. Like, if you yeah. want to put. Say like, all right, like, look, you you gotta get to main event status before you get your own interest, like that you want to make it special. Cause yeah. it kind of gets mundane when everybody just walks through the crowd, and now they got Megan O'Leary standing right there next to you with the graphics, <laughs> and you walking by Megan O'Leary, like that's got that, that's some cool element, but that doesn't add to your personality as a fighter. For real, if anything, that's more distracting to the guy walking out. They see this person get yeah, talking to the camera about you finna walk out. I'm like, oh, look at that. Yeah. All right, let me get back into my fighting mode and shit and stuff like that. So, right. <laughs> yeah. did, did your homeboy come to Denmark? Your, your, your little partner? He sent you an email or something? Who that? Oh, your your hype man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was watching. They sent me a, a video of him seeing that uh, you know seeing the finish and uh, That's and all that stuff. So that that was cool. Yeah, you, you had your boy watching on the couch in um, California. I was literally watching your fight before I went to uh, Spence Porter. 
Yeah. That, I ain't gonna lie to yeah. That gotta be it. Like the fight, that fight day, because I, I knew it was gonna be a big fight. It ended up being a classic fight. But it, like fight day was kind of thrown off. And then that car was sorry to me in Denmark. And then your fight, I'm like, all right, my man, kill a gorilla. And then slash somebody, <laughs> something gonna happen. And then that <laughs> night just jumped off. You said, yeah. no, for me. I literally was half asleep until I saw you get on boy, and then everybody got quiet. I was like, man, it's going to be a good fight day. Sure enough, <laughs> Hell jumped yeah. it off. Because it was like in the middle of the day, because I was in the West, I was in the Pacific, so it was like 1.30. Yeah. 1.30, 2 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like 1.30 back here when it, when when I was fighting, at least. Yeah. yeah so, man. yeah. It was a few people from Dallas fighting that day. Actually, it was me, uh, Spence, and it was a female boxer who fought somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where. I can't remember her freaking name, but... uh she won as well. On top of that, it was a good day for the lab, too, because uh, uh, Ben won the day before. I won that day, and Tank Tankinho was – was uh, he did a bunch of jiu-jitsu matches, and he won a major jiu- world jiu-jitsu match. Yes. And then uh, this past Friday, I think he just won another uh, jiu-jitsu match, a fight-to-win match. So. Yeah. For Pops, yeah, I was supposed to go to that, but I couldn't make it. And, yeah. And uh, for, before we let you go, talk about just how you, even though your stars being born, you the same cat. We were tr- we were vibing in, in Brooklyn. We didn't know each other from Dallas, and we naturally vibe. Talk about yeah. how that's a big deal. Keep keeping yourself, especially like with our culture. Like uh, I'll bring something off the air. We had just talked about Andre Emmett, and that shit happened. We yeah. just talked about that like the day before. Yeah. I didn't know he went to Carter. He's like, yeah, I went to school Andre Emmett, and then he got shot the next day. That's that was crazy, crazy yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, so that how, was. How, how big a deal is to remain positive and still represent brothers? Because they don't make a big deal about that in the UFC. But if you do yeah. something like John Jones, you're not going to get no eight chances like John Jones at the same time. Yeah, well, we know how America is, man, how they portray the black man and uh, how we're not being shown in the very best of, best of lights. But, um, you know, uh, the majority of us, the majority, and I really mean it, the majority of us, you know what I'm saying? Got our shit together. Um, you know, everybody makes mistakes and stuff like that. We're all we're all not perfect, but we ain't all you know thugging and and robbing and stealing and killing and fucking your girlfriend and doing and, you know and doing some trifling shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I feel that we are uh, the standard, which is why I feel that we are punished more severely by the system. So. Uh, <clears throat> But, uh, you know, it, it, to be honest, it's, uh, it's just, uh, what's the word? I just have to be accountable for myself. You know, I'm not, I don't like uh, garnering any sort of, uh, I don't really like garnering attention, period. You know what I'm saying? I don't like people looking at me, talking about me, judging me, and, and, and putting their, all, putting their, uh, their limitations, their stipulations, their criteria on me. You know what I'm saying? I'm a free bird. And can't nobody put me in a motherfucking cage. Um, so uh, in doing so, I want to be, I don't, it's not that I want to be an example. It's that I know that I have to be an example for any and everybody else who's, gonna, who's watching me. Uh, on top of that, uh, it's just the way, this is the way I carry myself. You know what I'm saying? Um, I ain't trying to sell myself or, or prostitute myself out for attention again or even for a dollar. You know, um, to be honest, I don't even like money. Uh, as 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 hard as that to uh, fathom, I don't like the whole system, the concept of it. It's an imaginary thing, it's a figment of our imagination that we created, and uh, <laughs> it's really corrupted uh, <laughs> the frequency of the world. I feel so. Uh, <clears throat> I just do what the fuck I want to do, and I, and I love what I do. So um, that's about it, you know. And, and uh, hopefully, someone can can see that and garner something good from it. And uh, if everybody can do something good, I feel the world will be a better place. Yeah. yeah, it's hard not to agree with what you just said right there, man. Yeah, I, I can't wait to, uh, of course, see you back in action again, man. Um, against two we don't know, you know, Kelvin Gastelum's ahead of you in the rankings. He's scheduled for Darren Till. Yoel Romero's still out there. You know, I don't. I know you like don't like to pick and choose, but... If you could choose a time frame to return, what do you what would be ideal for you? I would say maybe early 2020. Um, I had I had an X-ray and MRI done on my uh, knee and my chest. So tomorrow I'm going to the doctor to get the reading on that. I don't think that there are serious injuries, so I feel like I'm probably back in the training in a couple of weeks. Um, with that being said, I, I'll be ready. You know, I'll be I'd be ready for a fight uh, late 2019. 
or uh, early 2020. Um, but yeah, I really don't like making plans when I'm injured. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, it can be. It, it makes the whole waiting process more frustrating, if anything. Okay. But as far as who, uh, whoever's ahead of me that puts me closer to the belt, like I said in my interview, it might as well be the belt next. Um, but whoever, you know, uh, everybody's thinking I should fight Romero. Uh, I feel I think a fight uh, with Whitaker will be good too. Can get me there as well. Um, the winner of Till and Gastelum, um, or Costa. Those those are the guys in front of me. Um, if not Adesanya, I want either of those. Do you th- do you think anybody in that division can take your take your power? Because we ain't seen so far if I so far. Because a lot of these dudes all get hit. Insanio gets hit a little bit. Kelvin yeah. gets hit a lot. Whitaker gets hit a lot. Acosta, I can't say he didn't until this last one, but he took a beating. He kept on coming. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> like I said, anybody can get knocked out. So uh, uh, it depends on where I hit them, you know. If I hit you in your jaw, if I hit you in your ear, in your temple, you know what I'm saying, you probably go to sleep. You know, if I, if I hit you in your nose, if I hit you in your, fa- if I hit you in your eye, it's going to hurt. Um, <clears throat> when I kick you in your leg or your body, that shit's going to hurt. Uh, so... <clears throat> You know, uh, they can, they, uh, <laughs> whether they can survive them, I don't know. They can definitely take them because I'm going to give them to them. I'm going to give them all of it. Beautiful, man. Well, we can't wait to see it, man. Uh, heal up. And, of course, we'll be uh, keeping our ear out for, for some fight news from you. And, uh, yeah, man, we can't wait to see you back in there. Please welcome to Slip and Dip Podcast, making Slip and Dip debut. One of the best heavyweights in the world today, Mr. Jarrell, Big Baby Miller. Thanks for coming on, big baby. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's going on? Man, I, I, how, how inspired are you after last night seeing that crazy fight go down in your neck of the woods at MSG last night? How much that get you get your juices for to be in a fight of that magnitude on that stage? I mean, I, say it again. You said, how, how, how did it feel to be? Yeah, how, how, how's it about to be around that? Does that inspire you to be want to be get up, be in the fight, be in the ring, and a fight of that magnitude on that stage? Oh, yeah, of course. You know what I mean? I've been to plenty of fights of, of that level of magnitude in the garden before. You know, there's an opportunity missed, of course, on my side. But, you know, we'll be back. You know, we're, we're, we're a fighter, a warrior. So we'll definitely be back in that position. But it's always great to see good fights in my hometown. How'd you do with, because uh, you had a, you know, it's, it's been well documented, you had a rough 2019. How you do with the slander, people attacking your character and all that stuff uh, when things were what first came out and things were hitting the fan? I mean, listen, man, people are going to think what they want to think, but if anybody's going to keep, you know, try to, you know, be negative about it, if you're a perfect person, I guess you're close to being Jesus and being God then. You know what I'm saying? Everybody made mistakes in life, you know, it was something that wasn't intentional. It happened. I'm dealing with it like a man. But like I said before, man, if anybody that messes with Big Baby is going to be real, I'm a real person, I'm a real human being, and I always kept you like fakeness, then I'm not for you then, period. Gotcha. Yeah, you you've been having some people come up at you like checking you like while you're trying to do interviews and everything. Like, is anything anything else happened like that off camera that we haven't seen? Uh, say it again one more time. I said, it, it, with regards to that, you know, with the drug test and everything, it, like we saw, you know, you had to slap some uh, water out of the dude's hand while you're trying to do some interviews. Has anybody else like tried to check you like that that we haven't seen, you know, on camera? Uh, try to check me. Nobody's ever tried to check me face to face. I don't know. I don't know what guys say behind closed doors or on camera, but I've pretty much seen every heavy other other heavyweight face to face. I mean, nobody can nobody can come to my face and talk shit. You know what I mean? Compared to get slapped, period. You know what I mean? So you know I mean they can say they can say what they want to say, but face to face, they they nobody's doing that. Does it bother you that people overlook the fact that you're an uh, undefeated heavyweight? And, like, they talk about Deontay Wilder, but they don't talk about Big Baby Miller being a uh, 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 heavyweight that's undefeated. Does that bother you? And do you think you have to see somebody like Deontay to see who's the best in America and best heavyweight champion in the world? I mean, listen, you know the heavyweight division is always changing. Everybody has their opinion. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to sit there and say, say what it is right now. They had AJ as the best and AJ... AJ got his ass whooped. So, at, at this point in time, 
you know, the, the, it's between Andy Ruiz and, and Deontay Wilder, you know? Who you got Ruiz Wilder too? I mean, Wilder too. Ruiz Joshua too. Who do I got? Yeah, um, and why? Personally, I, I, I really don't know. You know what I mean? I, I'm, 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 I'm rooting. I'm rooting for, for Andy. Um, The question is, will Andy give me a shot after he wins again? I, I personally don't know. It's what I'm trying to say, so... So we'll have to we we'll have to find out. I, I heard a lot of people behind the scenes that know him pretty good. A lot of people said he's changed. Is that is that what you're hearing too? Yeah, I've I've heard that. I've heard that he's not the same person. I don't know 110. Um, percent I don't know 110 percent how true it is. But uh, he's a fighter. You know, he's making a shitload of money. So, I mean, he got to he got to he got to be ready. It's point blank. Period. Um, is, is it kind of frustrating to know that like you had that opportunity to be in that spot and, and knowing that Joshua you know isn't like this invincible guy that everybody was building him up to be I mean listen like I said before if the money was there once the money would be there again you know what I mean it's all about how you tell the story you know um, like I said before that actually people can sell the negative shit they want to hear but that actually made my pot grow is what I'm trying to say so like once I get back in position, it ain't nothing gonna change. We're gonna get back to the drawing board, figure this shit out, and let me get, get, get to work. I, I think that people overlook that, uh, like, um, in today's time, how, how did you have to deal with your mental health? I'm pretty sure that's something that you don't just prepare for, you know, you just gotta, like, deal with it on the fly. Is there anything that you did to kind of uh, keep from getting depressed and deal with all the, all the negativity that you had with people coming at you out, out the blue and attacking you? I mean, nobody really came out of the blue and attacked me personally. I mean, they could do shit on social media and on interviews, but I mean, you come to my face, you better get slapped. Like I said before, that's it. You know, you better get taken off without you won't be disrespectful. But I mean, yeah, of course, I, I I had my days where I was really just down, didn't really want to do nothing, and even sometimes I go through a little bit here and there during the week. But like I said before, I think the hardest part is over. The main thing was you know getting it off my chest, dealing with it, and it's becoming a better person. Sometimes. Like, trying to say basically i feel like this took me up a year of my goal you know I, I, a year a year from where i wanted to be i'm trying to say so i think we'll be back by the end of the year that's the main thing and let's be ready you know being around family and friends and you know having my two dogs and you know just, just doing 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 stuff at home you know just staying you know just staying humble and just chilling you know, it, it helps it helps the brain to reset itself i, I just feel, feel to be i be um like, uh, last night, you probably one of the top two or three people in the building last night. Like, we couldn't even talk because people kept, kept interrupting. Hey, big baby, da-da-da. How's it feel to be getting that love um, from people in the boxing community once again, like last night? I mean, in that like, big... yeah, yeah, man, it always feels good, you know what I mean? Because in the day, like I said before, a lot of people respect me because I've always been real. You know what I mean? I'm not sitting there hiding by excuses or if I ate, ate or whatever. Like I said, shit happens, you know what I mean? Like, I'm dealing with it. So when I say, listen, man, I'm going I'm to be better and get better to do it in the right way point blank period you know mm. absolutely yeah man so uh obviously like kendrick just touched on the fight right there um you know we've had two fantastic fights just back to back it seems uh which uh, I've, i saw people going back and forth you know which fight was better spence porter the triple g fight last night which one did you think was better um I haven't really thought about it, you know. I, I didn't see the L. Spence Porter fight face to face. Okay. But you know, I've seen I seen the Triple G, Sergey fight face to face. So I'm gonna I'm pick the Sergey fight. For me, probably better out of the two. I, I've seen that live, you know. Right, right, yeah. Do you think uh, you think that Canelo and Triple G gonna run it back now? Because I, I saw a lot of conflicting opinions. People were saying some people thought Triple G had to look great, and some people were saying Triple G, if he didn't look great, Canelo would be more likely to take it. What side are you on on that? Uh, man, listen, man. If you get a win, right, there's a, there's a saying in boxing, a win is a win. So if they don't do it now, they might not get a chance again. You know what I mean? Because so, I don't see Triple G beating Google and Charlie like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. Nah. Yeah. Uh, can, can you just from a fighter perspective, how much do having like a hot, a big name trainer help you out in a big fight like that? Like Andre Rozier, it seemed like his influence in the game plan he attacked for Demichenko definitely was a big factor in that fight. Is that something that people overlook the importance of these high level trainers that get these names and stuff like that? 
I mean, you got you to gotta understand, man. You don't always need a big-name trainer to take it to the level. A lot of big-name trainers are freaking lazy. You know what <laughs> I mean? So you want a trainer that's... You want a trainer that's, that has a, a decent name that's been in the game for a while, but also still hungry for it. You know what I mean? That's going to get up with you in the morning time. That's going to that's gonna sit down and watch film with you. That's going to call you sometimes in the middle of night and see how you feel. You know what I mean? A lot of trainers don't do that no more. A lot of trainers want to be in front of the camera and only want, only want a big percentage, and that's it. You know what I mean? They don't want the actual effort and actually being a trainer. Gotcha. And, and, um, how many tuna fights do you think you need before you can you you fight like a Joshua or a Fury or a Wilder or a Ruiz? Say it again. I'm sorry. How many tuna fights do you think you need before you get before you get to be one of one of those champions? Uh, who who would I who would I want to? If I get if I get a champion? Yeah, no. That's how many fights do you do you, do you want to fight before you start fighting those champions? Oh, yeah, I think, I think we're, I'm trying to get, like, two fights in the next three months once I return, you know what I mean, three or th- two or three fights, you know what I mean, I'm trying to stay busy, that, that's, how I, that's how I like it, um, if I could get three in by before the middle of next year, that'd be dope, you know what I mean, that's the game plan right now, so uh, I think it definitely could happen. Um, getting really tip-top shape, and, um... Like I said, just, just, just get back to work. You know what I mean? What, what, what it's done is done is behind us, and let's be ready for anything. Yeah, uh, uh, five questions uh, for uh, for me. What do you want the fans to know about Big Baby Miller? That they might hear a lot of the headlines, they might read them, they hear people on all these different YouTube channels. What do you want them to know? Since that, since you haven't really you haven't spoke much, so we're trying to give you the floor to build a re, to get your message out. <laughs> Listen, man. In life, you know, things are gonna happen. Sometimes you can explain it. Sometimes you don't. But like, at the end of the day, you gotta be a man and do what you gotta do. Sometimes I say it. Um, sometimes making excuses doesn't even make no sense. Just deal with it. Take your lashes and keep it moving. You know what I mean? Don't sit there and try to point the finger, even though sometimes you could. But like I said, we ain't we ain't no Takashi Six Nine over here. We real Brooklyn right over here. You know what I mean? We gonna, we gonna take our beatings and keep it moving. <laughs> Yeah, man, absolutely. I mean, I guess that's the best, the only way you can handle it, right? Just keep that's moving it, forward. That's it, man. You get more respect that way sometimes, man. Fuck it. <laughs> you don't got to buy test your gangster, like he said. And why go? Man, listen, I- ain't no, listen, if, if, you, if you hit, listen, I'll tell you one thing. I'm not no pushover. I've done ran up on every almost every heavyweight already and had a tell them to their face. Every heavyweight. So, like I said, there ain't nobody ever ran up on me and walked fucked up on me crazy like I've done to everybody else. So, like I said, like I, I'm not I'm not the one to play with. Like, you can leave a box and we can leave the streets. Whatever. Several how you want it. You know what I mean? But like I said, business is business, personal is personal. You know what I mean? Plain and simple. <laughs> yeah, man. That's great. Hey, hey, that's the only way you can do it, man. That's the only way you can do it. Can't wait to see you get back in action, man. And, uh, you know, write, write everything that's been kind of wrong for you over the past, you know, a few months. Uh, thanks, guys. I appreciate it, guys. You men be safe out there. All right, man. Take it easy. Please welcome to the Slip and Dip Podcast, making his Slip and Dip debut. One of the biggest names in boxing, climbing up that ladder. He's the founder of Fight Hub, the second biggest YouTube channel in combat sports, the biggest boxing one, Mr. Marcos Villegas. What's up, guys? Thank you uh, for having me on right now, man. Hey, hey, uh, it's out to be in ringside, like myself, the last two weeks at these crazy fights, man. Last week was a classic. Last night was a surprise to many, but they were both action-packed fights where people literally getting out their seat the whole time, up and down, because it was bell-to-bell action. No, yeah. Well, we've been lucky, right? Like, right. the last two fights that we've seen have been uh, fight-of-the-year type fights. Um, that Golovkin one was, was toe-to-toe. The, the Spence and Porter one was a good one, and we still got Joshua and Ruiz coming up, too. Uh, and I think that one's going to end up being a really good fight as well. But, yeah, man, uh, back-to-back, it's it's only good for the sport, you know. It's I, I hope the people that tuned in for the pay-per-view uh, that we had on Fox also tuned in for this fight um, on the zone uh, because, you know, it just helps create more fans. But, yeah, it's it's been back-to-back great fights. 
I, I forgot he, Marco's also the score, the official score for for Fox, the new Fox um, pay per view and, and and their network. How do, how do you deal with the job with that when people probably just come up to you? Oh, you score such and such wrong. Has that happened to you? You just be chilling and like, bro, you don't know what you're doing. Like, is that crazy? Yeah, I've, I've gotten a. <laughs> that's funny you bring that up. Uh, I've gotten a few people that have come up to me and they're like, "Hey, you're Marcos, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Man." How'd you score this fight this way? Like, what were you looking at? And like, it's like, I still haven't gotten used to it, to be honest. Like, it, it's it's weird, you know? Like, I'm not, I'm usually used to people coming up to me like, hey, I know you from the interviews. Like, you do good interviews and stuff. And now I'm getting people like coming up to me like, hey, how the hell did you score this fight this way? Like, what are you looking at, you know? But whenever I, I meet people like that, like on the streets or anything, um, you know, I always explain it to them like, hey, this is what I was looking at. and. And you got to take this into account uh, and these other things. And nine times out of ten, they're like, oh, you know what? You're right. You're right. You know, and, and they usually understand or, or they say like, hey, I can see it that way. I can see as to why you scored it that way. You know, but don't get me wrong. Like the, the scoring stuff in general, like sometimes can be super stressful because, you know, there's a lot of pressure on me. You know, like I'm I'm the voice of the people, you know, so like what I see, I'm. I, what I see is supposed to reflect what people see on the telecast. So that, that, that is a lot of pressure at times on me, you know? Yeah, 100%. I can see, but I mean, you kind of had to know that was going to come, though, when you, when you signed up for that gig. Like, you're going to get a lot of blowback, even if you are right, more often than not. No, honestly, dude, I wasn't expecting it because really? no one ever told me. Yeah, no, because, like, I got in through Steve Farhood, you know? Steve was my mentor, and, you know, he, he helped me out a lot. Um, but he never... <laughs> He honestly never told me, like, that side of it, you know? Like, and Steve keeps, like, a low profile, you know, uh, as well. But, yeah, no, it, it – I – even now, it's – it hasn't happened too, too often, but it has happened. But, yeah, no, I was never expecting that. But now that I think about it and, and the way you guys are putting it, yeah, of course, you know, I'm going to come under scrutiny uh, because, you know, I, I'm, I'm the one that's supposed to be letting uh, America and the world know, like, how a fight – is going or, or or should be going so yeah you know it's uh it's gonna come with the territory get some people the behind the scenes on how fight hub works because they see all the videos but they don't see all the stuff that go into it to get those subscribers because i think right now behind mma fighting uh fight up's the second biggest combat sports uh, youtube channel and also get some insight to the ufc opening their doors and let fight hub get up in that thing now that boxing's yeah. about to come then the courtesy of mr dana white Right. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. You know. I. I think that's more of a. They. They want to expand their audience, the UFC, and um, you know they. They know that they're going to open up their boxing division as well. So you know they're, they're seeing that a majority of the boxing media is YouTube based, and, and you know it's smart of them for for them to do that. Now, uh, first off, like congratulations to, to MMA fighting for for doing that. You know we're we're all part of the same family with SB Nation and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, congrats on them in terms of like, you know, everybody thinks like, oh, all these guys do is just go to all the, and you know this, Kendrick. <laughs> they, they always think like, oh, you know, all you guys do is just go to the fights and just watch fights and like chill and like get to hang out with these guys. And it's like, no, dude, like that's like 2% of it. Like, Goodbye. they don't know about like all the editing we got to do, like the deadlines we got to put up with, like. It's stressful work, man. You see all these gray hairs I got on my chin, dude. Like, <laughs> and, and they catch people acting work, a fool and, 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 and without being part of the scene. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, so it, it is a very, it can be a very stressful job, and it's also extremely rewarding uh, as well. But you know, there there's a lot more work that people don't see. You know, and even on on the writing side, you know, when people write, they gotta deal with deadlines. Uh, they got to deal with hounding people for interviews and, and getting quotes. Same thing with us. You know, we got to hound people to get interviews. Um, and, you know, we got to get these interviews up right away and we got to edit them right away. So, yeah, it, it, it's a lot of work that's put into, you know, running um, the channel um, that people, when they see it on the surface, might not think that there is a lot to do in terms of operating something as big as what uh, Fight Hub has become. I, I, was telling, I was telling Matt off air, like, last night I did something that you can't do in Vegas. I, I went to Pennsylvania and interviewed, like, um, Demetrius Andre and um, Andre, uh, uh, 
Uncle Andre, and then I sat there and told the people at MSG I forgot my camera so I could get back to the press conference to talk to Eddie and Tom Loeffler and them because I had to get those videos. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of work, man. You know that, Kendrick. It, it's it's a lot of hustle and bustle, man. And, and you know that's what it is. And I think that's that's part of it that keeps everybody on their toes. You know, is is going around and getting everybody's reactions uh, towards the the events that we do and stuff. But, uh, you know, like at the end of the day, like yeah, it is a stressful job, but I think we all love it. We all love the sport that we cover, and like me personally, like I've been doing this for ten years, and I still at, at the core of it, I still enjoy talking to the guys that we talk to, talking to the athletes and interviewing them and stuff like that. I genuinely still have a passion for it, you know. So I'm just happy for that 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 I'm doing something that I'm passionate about. Because I've had a lot of jobs, man. I've had over like 20 jobs, you know, and this is probably the only job I've ever been really good at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? How, how, how do you have the vision to not just be pro boxing? Like, you know, a lot of people, all I do is do boxing. Just like we, we on the MMA side, there's a lot of people, I ain't touching boxing. That's old school. How you how you got the forefront to be able to do both and keep up with both? Because me and Matt know from the show, it's, it's kind of hard to do because they're completely different. And then the crowds are different. And the elements, like we all talked about, Israel Azanio had a nice intro last night, his walkout, which was just like another... Type, typical boxing type walkout, but it's getting a lot of buzz because it's MMA. Yeah, well, you know, as we've seen, you know, MMA is a different sport um, than than boxing. Like, I, I feel like for the longest time, there's been like a, a crossover audience. And like, you're an MMA fan. I'm an MMA fan. I enjoy boxing too. You enjoy boxing as well. So I, I think there is a crossover um, market there, but. You know, in terms of like working in, in boxing, like I, I saw very early that there was a niche that wasn't met in boxing. Uh, and I felt like I could kind of fill that niche in because I started off doing MMA first. And I saw that MMA at that point was already like super filled up. And I'm like, well, boxing isn't. So I naturally gravitated towards that. So, you know, it, it was just being at the right place at the right time in, in terms of like serving that market as to like how. I ended up focusing just on, on mostly primarily boxing. Yeah, well, what would you say is like the one thing, like, you know, we hear all the time, like whenever someone says, you know, you turn your hobby into like your, your main job, like you start to feel a little jaded towards certain aspects of it. Like, what would you say is like that one thing since you started doing it, uh, you know, covering combat sports is kind of like turned you off that you weren't, you know, when you started uh, doing it? No, yeah, totally. And I think you guys would agree with me is, you know, the PR people. The PR people uh, <laughs> at times. Thousand yeah, percent agree. No, for real. Thousand yeah, percent agree. Yeah, like at times they could be extremely helpful, but at times they they could just make you hate what you do, you know, because they don't give you access. Like they're they're difficult to to deal with at times, you know. Like I I just think overall, I think the PR people they come from traditional PR background, like corporate five hundred company backgrounds, where they are not too verse in digital and really know the amount of traffic and, and the amount of eyes and, and audience that we bring to the tra uh, table uh, digital wise, you know, it, it's a lot more than, than the print. And, you know, they go gaga over print media, which confounds me because when, you know, we release uh, videos compared to like the articles they write, I almost guarantee it that like nine times out of ten our videos do more than than some of the articles these guys write you know so it, it gets frustrating to be honest you know because you got to contend with that and i feel like the digital media doesn't get like it's just due it's just respect when compared to other traditional media yeah 100 percent. I, I agree with that and it's it's just one of those things that i think some outlets are starting to pick up on but it's taken them a while and then other outlets like you know what we've seen with the whole sale of sports illustrated and they're going to a contractor based thing firing full-time like there's a lot of elements in the in the you know sports media space that are kind of changing for the worse in some ways but you know there's some of them like you guys over at fight up they're doing it right <clears throat> yeah no and you know i've i've I guess i always try to explain to them like hey man like with their articles, you can't see how many clicks they're getting. Like with us, you can, you know, and, and we bring a lot to the table. Like 
you know, and the thing, the other thing is like they, they sometimes get a lot of preferential treatment compared to us. And we're, we're out there covering every single event and they come in only for the big ones, but they get the red carpet rolled out, you know? So that, that's a frustrating part. But when you look at it overall, you're seeing all these companies um, downsizing, getting rid of the riders, like you mentioned, going to independent contractors, focusing more on digital, uh, because that, that's the way to go. At the end of the day, you're, you're seeing all these streaming services. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of people, the way they consume their content now is no one reads, man. Who wants to read when they could see something? Honestly, we're, we're visual creatures uh, in general, in nature, you know, we, we see and we learn and we consume our information by seeing, not by reading, uh, at, at least at this point in time, because the, the way uh, we're, we're structured out, you know, we're always going to prefer to watch something than to read something. You know, that's just how we're built in, especially us um, males, guys, you know, we're, we're more visual than anything. So, you know, it, everything's going to that point now. Before we let you go, but Marcos, who's your top five in your pound for pound list, and what are two or three fights that need to happen over in the next calendar year? Top five pound for pound, I would say right now, ah uh, man, it's subjective. Like I, I look at pound for pound as if you put all these guys in the same weight class, who would end up winning, um, and who has the most skills, you know? And, and you know, Lomachenko's looked a little vulnerable the last fights. I like to think I know why, because I think he's fighting way above his weight class. These guys are bigger. They can take his punch better. But skill for skill, talent-wise, he still has more in the tool bag than every single fighter, I feel, in my opinion, on earth. Um, but because he's been vulnerable, it makes me, I don't know, have some reservations putting him number one now. So if I, I had a gun to my head, I would push Crawford ahead of uh, Lomachenko as number one. So I would, I would have Crawford number one, Lomachenko number two. Usyk number three, Naoya Inoue number four, and then Canelo number five. Based on that, uh, in terms you of fights, Spence? That I wanted, you got Spence in top five? Nah, man, Spence Spence barely got his first win over a, a credible opponent just now. You know, like people will be like, "Oh, what about Kel Brook? He fought Golovkin's leftovers." You know. What about Mikey? Mike Mikey, smaller guy moving up. Too to small. me, that doesn't count. You know, mm. Inoue's murking everybody in that division. Usyk cleaned out a division. Lomachenko making elite fighters quit. Terrence Crawford unified a division. You know, Spence hasn't gotten to that yet. So that, to me, those things mean more on a resume. And that's why those guys are ranked higher. Okay. That's it. All right. Yeah, what, what three fights you do? That would, that would, that would, that would, that would be you need to be ringside at over the next year? Um, Well, the Ruiz-Joshua rematch. Are you going out there? Oh, I don't know, man. If uh, <laughs> the Saudi government, I don't know, man. It's, bombs are dropping over there it's kind of you know i i, I want to go over there but i would say that fight or the uh the fury wilder rematch is a fight that i want to see but the fight that we all want to see honestly is the spence uh versus terence crawford fight I, I think that's the fight that uh us at fight fans really uh get happy about and we want to see yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. that's the way to do it man well marcos man we appreciate the time brother uh oh, man, hopping on with this as you're walking through the streets of shot town <laughs> yeah i know right <laughs> <laughs> so we appreciate the time man and uh thanks for uh all of her work you do man you make it you know what you've created with fight hub is, is something real special for, for for fight fans and i'm sure that they appreciate it as well so uh people out there if you have not watched or if you're not subscribed to fight hub go do so i'm sure you are you, you you watch it so yeah <laughs> thank you guys i appreciate it man thank you so much Thanks for coming on, brother. I know, I know yeah, you're like hard to get. Like, like me, I think he's the only person to travel as much as me the last two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff, guys. Appreciate right. it. Appreciate right. it. Take it easy, bro.